In 1996, Italian mineralogist Vincenzo Di Michele spotted an unusual yellow-green gem within one of Tutankhamun's necklaces. The jewel was tested and found to be made of a type of glass known as Libyan desert glass. The interesting thing regarding this, however, is its origins. To this day, no one seems to be able to explain how it formed. No trace of a crater has ever been discovered. An ancient meteorite, or indeed outer space object, scorching across the skies of Egypt is the basis for many religious teachings within this once amazing ancient civilization. They associated the objects and the flaming tails during such events with that of a phoenix, and the collected items, presumably nearly always meteorites, were then hammered down into wares. Nine small beads, stored at the University College London's Petrie Museum, dated to around 3200 BC, were found in necklaces along with exotic terrestrial minerals such as lapis lazuli, agate, and gold. They are some of the earliest iron artifacts ever found, and archaeologists have confirmed that they came from outer space. Meteoric iron is much harder and more brittle than copper. Quote, they were rolled and hammered into shape. This is a very different technology from the usual stone bead drilling, and shows quite an advanced understanding, showing the metalsmiths knew exactly how to work this rather difficult material," said Thilo Rarin, a University College London professor of archaeology. When American geophysicist John Wasson was consulted regarding King Tut's strange gem, he curiously linked the event with one within an extremely remote forest of Siberia, an event we have covered before. Quote, when the thought came to me that this required a hot sky, I thought immediately of the Tunguska event, he told Horizon. In 1908, a massive explosion flattened 80 million trees in Tunguska, Siberia. And whatever landed there over a century ago is still there, and it kills any living organism which settles above it. And what is most interesting surrounding all of this is the ancient Egyptian accounts of what they did with a rather peculiar, rather special type of object that was, at one point, retrieved from the glassy sands of Libya. A particularly different object, which they called a phoenix egg. That hieroglyph state was secreted away within a secret chamber deep within the Great Pyramid. We have covered before the hypothesis that these stories etched in hieroglyphics may be far older than the Egyptian culture which may have preceded it. Yet the question is clear. What could this phoenix egg be? In the Museum of the Unexplained in Reed Spring, Missouri, a rather peculiar artifact can be found. Known as the Bob White Artifact, Bob was driving with a friend down a Colorado highway one night in 1985, when they would both experience a close encounter. As the craft flew over Bob's head, according to Bob, it dropped him a gift, an object which has caused Bob numerous issues. Quote, I don't know about you, but as for me, every time I hear people from Skeptic Magazine lying through their teeth, it makes me sick. They say they have never seen any hard evidence of UFOs. This is only true because they refuse to look at this, a piece of a UFO. So the next time you see the Skeptic Magazine people on Larry King or some other TV program saying there is no physical evidence, you will know they are lying. I have challenged them to debate me, but they are afraid. So Skeptic Magazine, you have been exposed for the fraud that you are. That was a statement made by Bob White in the late 90s. He further claimed that in 1996, he was flown to the classified Los Alamos National Laboratory for a detailed analysis of his evidence. White was told by senior staff that the object he recovered was indeed of extraterrestrial origin, also confessing to have successfully collected another object similar to his before. Although the officials fervently denied these claims, in 2000, Bob managed to acquire U.S. Army documents dating from the 1940s titled UFOs in Denmark. In it were multiple images of an object nearly identical to the one he had. When Dr. Rudolf Olson of Carolina examined the artifact, he concluded, quote, To describe the Bob White object in the simplest possible way, 
I think you can say it is an agglomeration of rapidly cooled droplets or particles of an aluminum silicon alloy. With such an unusual structure, I can only speculate on how it was formed. It turns out that this artifact was free-formed, or more precisely, it was somehow cast in a zero-g environment without the use of a mold. It has been to over 15 labs and universities over the past 21 years, including Los Alamos, Sally, New Mexico, etc. If the artifact had been on a machine or a grinder of some sort, there would inevitably have been forensic evidence left upon the artifact. All we know is that it was in a molten state when ejected into a vacuum under extreme pressure within extremely cold conditions. Although Bob White's artifact rarely gains any attention anymore, it is clearly a most compelling piece of evidence in support of the possibility of alien visitation. Many people believe that the brightest human of our modern age was not in fact Einstein, but was actually a man who died penniless and alone, with only his pigeons for company. A man who went by the name Nikola Tesla. When Einstein was once asked how it felt to be the smartest human being on Earth, he famously retorted, I don't know, you will have to ask Nikola Tesla. Throughout Tesla's life, he invented many things which have been of tremendous value to humanity. Yet many still believe that his most valuable of inventions were suppressed, whisked away into secret vaults at the time of his death. A life's work, postulations, theories, hypotheses, experiments, and inventions, all concealed from the world, hidden with the motive of protecting a status quo which is moved and shook by some extremely powerful individuals. Individuals whose empires have slowly but surely gained a stranglehold upon the resource distribution, and indeed the technological advancement of mankind as a whole. Technological advances in communication and travel have only extended these tentacles of control across the globe. Nikola Tesla often spoke of an invention which he claimed would save the world, a machine making energy free for all, yet, alas, for some, this particular area of his work is not our main item of interest tonight, but rather his possible experience of a close encounter with aliens and his subsequent invention which became famously known as an IFO. He eventually gained a patent on the peculiar aircraft which he called the world's first flying saucer. Interestingly, the interior design of the flying saucer matched that of descriptions made by some who have claimed to have seen a UFO from the inside. With a discoidal capacitor that he believed was of sufficient enough to provide enough thrust for the craft to fly, the design included other inventions which he claimed would have allowed the pilot complete control over the direction of the craft. Tesla even decked out the interior of the ship with flat screen television screens and external video cameras for the pilot's blind spots. However, although the patent was indeed granted, the craft lacked a primary power source. Whether or not Tesla had actually developed this and kept it secret is unknown. Clearly a sophisticated and well thought out craft which has conveniently slipped into the archives of history, or quite possibly, black projects involving secret aircraft developments by the American government. Where the idea for this came from is unknown, however, author Tim R. Swartz, along with many other researchers and even Tesla himself, claims that he was once contacted by aliens via transmissions from outer space. According to Swartz's book, The Lost Journals of Nikola Tesla, Tesla at one point was developing a powerful radio antenna designed to monitor thunderstorms in Earth's skies. While testing the device, Swartz claimed that Tesla overheard radio transmissions he believed were actually extraterrestrial communications. Quote, he wondered at the time if he wasn't listening to one planet greeting another, as he put it. From that point on, it became somewhat of an obsession of his to build better and better radio receivers to try to see if he could repeat what he heard. He got to the point where he claimed that he was actually receiving voice transmissions. He said it sounded just like people talking back and forth to each other. He made notes saying that he was actually hearing intelligent beings from another planet talking to each other, although he didn't know what language they were speaking, but he still felt he understood them." End quote. Swartz claims that the book was written using sensational data obtained from the inventor's most private papers, kept under wraps by the military and big business concerns of America. Regardless of the actual facts surrounding the origin of the IFO, Tesla was undoubtedly a remarkable human being, 
one who gave the world some remarkable things. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. On April the 17th, 1897, an incredible event would occur in a small farm within Aurora, Texas. According to the locals, an alien craft came streaking down towards their farmhouse before dramatically crashing through a windmill and into a nearby field. The incident, now known as the Aurora UFO incident, was strangely similar to the Roswell crash. The people who lived on this extremely remote farm would actually discover alien corpses within the alien wreckage. On the 19th of April, 1897, Dallas Morning News, written by Aurora resident S.E. Hayden, alleged that the UFO is said to have hit a windmill on the property of a judge, J.S. Proctor, two days earlier at around 6 a.m., resulting in its crash. The pilot, who was reported to have been not of this world and Martian-looking, according to a reported Army officer from nearby Fort Worth, did not survive the crash subsequently buried with Christian rites at the nearby Aurora Cemetery. And the cemetery does indeed contain a Texas Historical Commission marker mentioning the incident. Reportedly, wreckage from the crash site was dumped into a nearby well, while some ended up with the alien in the grave. Adding to the mystery was the story of Mr. Brawley Oates, who purchased Judge Proctor's property around 1935. Oates cleaned out the debris from the well in order to use it as a water source, but later developed an extremely severe case of arthritis. He later claimed that he was convinced it to have been a result of the contaminated alien water. However, not only is there clearly extremely compelling details here, some of which clearly need to be investigated further, there is also the site of an alien grave. On December 2, 2005, UFO Files undertook an investigation related to the incident, titled Texas's Roswell. Their episode featured a 1973 investigation led by Bill Case, an aviation writer for the Dallas Times-Herald and the Texas State Director of Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. MUFON investigated the Aurora Cemetery. They discovered a rather peculiar stone that was, in fact, a headstone, which depicts an alien craft. This stone signifies the resting place of what most of the town are convinced was an alien being. The team received very strange readings from metal detectors when exploring the grave. MUFON asked for permission to exhume the site, but the cemetery association declined permission. After the MUFON investigation, the marker mysteriously disappeared from the cemetery, and a 3-inch pipe was placed into the ground. MUFON's metal detectors no longer picked up the strange metal readings from the grave. Thus, it is now largely presumed that the artifacts, along with remains, have been secretly removed from the grave. MUFON's report eventually stated that the evidence was inconclusive, but did not rule out the possibility of that strange event actually occurring on the night of 1897. Although the cemetery associations still do not permit exhumation, Ground-penetrating radar has been used on the grave. However, the condition has badly deteriorated, and the radar was not able to conclusively prove what's still there. Could there really have once been an alien buried in this small corner of Aurora? Sadly, we may never know for sure.